TLT stock and TMF stock both took it hard as bond yields rally, bonds selling off with the inverse relationship. The catalyst is real simple. The Federal Reserve just finished a two-day uh, meeting yesterday and basically said interest rates will remain higher for longer. I have charts on the yield curve where I can show you a progression of what's going on and why the long end of the yield curve is finally getting close to what the Federal Reserve keeps saying is is actually happening and the markets are finally paying attention. But it isn't just necessarily this move, that there are catalyst moves that are going to continue to push this economy. I've been talking about this for several days and weeks. I expected we would see TML, uh, TMF stock and TLT stock move lower. I put out content week after week saying, listen, we're going lower, we're going lower, we're going lower. And individuals have respectfully disagreed. We went lower. We will continue to go lower. Sure, we may see some uh, TLT stock and TMF stock bounce around at this point, but the, the, that, that big shock is out of the way. Now, however, what happens if we continue to get economic data that shows robust economic activity? That will continue to push the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates higher, if not raise interest rates more. And I've been showing different charts pointing out what's important, the US dollar. The dollar index is starting to push up to bigger numbers. That will rattle the stock market even more and force the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates more because the dollar is moving higher. There's more money showing up in the United States because interest rates are high. Unfortunately, the recipe for that is higher interest rates, which will attract more money. So this is an ongoing event that eventually TLT stock and TMF stock are going to continue lower until the Federal Reserve breaks this economy. They're not going to be able to do a soft landing. They're going to have to push interest rates further and break the economy. And that's when TLT stock and TMF stock are probably going to settle down. And then you'll see the opportunity to buy because you'll probably see a pretty decent move higher after interest rates readjust. Let's jump in. I'll show you exactly what I'm looking at and what you want to pay attention if you're paying attention to TMF stock and TLT stock. Here I'm actually showing TLT stock and you can see the big move lower down below um, levels that were kind of what a technician would say was support. Um, putting it into a kind of a bigger picture and the volume overlaps some of the bar charts. Is the volume has been considerably higher as we've seen big moves. But any kind of support from a technician's standpoint, something I do not subscribe to, but technicians do, uh, they're going to sit there and say, support is gone. And that gives them the trigger they're looking for to sell into this. Because of that, like I said, I don't subscribe to the uh, technical analysis, but other people do, and because other people do, I kind of have to. Here is a look at the 10-year yield. Now, TLT and TMF trade off the 20-year yield, so the, the pictures are pretty much exactly the same, but the, I wanted to put bring in the 10-year because it's kind of a midpoint between say uh, what the Federal Reserve is doing more immediately versus 20 years out. And I do have charts on the um, uh, yield curve. Interesting kind of look at the yield curve that I'm going to show you here, but you can see yields continue to move higher. It's the high, long end of the yield curve that's really kind of shifting things. And this is what you're really going to want to pay attention to, continue to look at the yields. The S&P 500, uh, this is SPY stock, or is it S&P S &P 500? They're the same. One's an ETF off the other. You can see the big move downward. Now, more than likely, we'll probably see, I'm actually probably going to buy some calls for tomorrow because I think we'll probably see some settling down. If they go out of the money, okay. I'm long volatility, so I don't really care. If, if SPY stock, if I buy calls on SPY stock tomorrow and SPY rallies, I make money. If I buy calls for expiration zero DTE um, and 
the stock market continues lower, my volatility spikes up, I make money. So I'm playing both sides. But when I look at this chart, I think to myself, the S&P 500, 4,000? Yeah, probably. Uh, 4,800? We will see 3,800 before we see 4,800. That's my take on this. That this shift, this continuation is going to get worse and worse and worse. And the stock market, which I talked about this back in December 2022, I said, this is my stock market prediction for this year, for 2022, that we would see a nice, easy, steady, gradual increase in the stocks until September, October, November, December. Then we will see a sharp decline. You can watch my video if you like. I've been consistent as to what is likely to happen. Now I'm telling you this will decline over the course of the next four to six months, February into March. March will probably see the S&P 500 kind of bottom out. But the reality is we're probably going to see the Federal Reserve get spooked by data points that are showing that there's likely to be more inflation. Therefore, they have to raise interest rates. In 2024, the only reason why there would be declines in the Federal Reserve interest rates is simply this. They've crashed the economy. They don't have enough time to do that. That's not a challenge. U.S. dollar index. You really need to pay attention to the U.S. dollar index simply because as this moves higher, this rattles stocks. In multinational companies are not going to be as profitable because they have to repatriate funds in dollars. And as the money, as the dollar index keeps getting higher, the money that they made in Europe or Asia or wherever comes back, and because of the uh, exchange rate, it's less which means less profitability for stocks, which means a declining stock market. This, the increase in the US dollar index is an effect, it's not the cause. The cause, of course, is people are bringing money in from outside countries to invest in the United States where the interest rates are secure and high, higher than where they are, which means the dollar index keeps moving higher. Because all that money is showing up, that means there's more liquidity in the economy, which the Federal Reserve is absolutely trying to get rid of. This is not like a one and done kind of thing. So take a look at this yield curve, uh, paying attention to the red and black lines. Uh, this is January 2023 is the red line. Today, or, or I'm sorry, July 13th is the black line. That's when the Federal Reserve said, we felt that the Federal Reserve was going to pause. All right. Um, so you can see that the front end, the left hand side of the yield curve, the red really pushed higher, but the long end remained the same up until July. Now, the red line, of course, is July and the black line is today. All right. So basically, um, the front end of the curve hasn't changed much since July, which is only two months. Federal Reserve has basically said, yeah, we think we're going to be where we are. But they are probably likely to raise interest rates, I think, at the next meeting, meeting which I think is in uh, first week of November. So the black line will move a little higher. But what we're seeing is the big move higher from July in the long end of the curve. That basically is the 20 year pushing higher. Interest rates on the two year and the short term haven't changed since July. The long end is finally getting the message from the Federal Reserve that interest rates are going to remain higher for longer, if not go higher. That's what this rattling of the cage is all about. Moving forward, keep looking at the dollar index. Keep looking at the interest rates. Those things are probably going to continue to rattle. Uh, we got economic data coming in over the next couple of weeks that will likely show that this economy is robust continually. 
Uh, we have seen some kind of declines in the labor market, but I don't think it's going to be enough to really kind of give the Federal Reserve the ability to say, we're good. I've looked at uh, initial claims and continuing claims for um, uh, employment insurance, and they're declining, which means the uh, overall employment situation is still pretty strong, although slowing, just not slowing enough. We'll start seeing eventually the Federal Reserve is going to push things so that we get to a point where we see negative employment growth, meaning non-farm payrolls go negative and unemployment rate moves higher. That will affect profitability for companies, which means the stock market will go higher. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve will keep interest rates higher for longer because their bigger priority is inflation. The dollar will continue to see influxes of money which the Federal Reserve will have to keep interest rates higher for longer because of all the liquidity. So this will be ongoing over the course of, say, next three, four, six, nine, twelve months. My, my take is that I'm looking to buy TLT stock and TMF stock at its bottom at some point. We're nowhere near that. There's more downside risk than there is upside move. Eventually, however, the upside will appear and that should be a nice little rally. Make sure you hit that like and follow button. I'll keep you up to date.